the shit show. Oh, welcome to my shit show. I am the host, Kyle Ayers. Let's play a little ditty. That's enough. It's all you get for free, YouTube. And my guest today, he's, uh, I don't know anything about this guy. His manager paid to get him on here. But please, everybody, give it up for Andy Draskel. Andy Draskel, everybody. Come on out. Andy Draskel, everybody. Thank you for being on the Kyler Shit Show. Hold on, what's going on here? What is going on? What's going on with this guy, everybody? Am I right? Am I right with this guy? But for real, Andy, how are you? I'm doing good. How? What is? Look at you. You look like if Bob Ross's son disappointed him. Am I right, everybody? Am I right with this guy? What is the? What is happening right now? Andy, look at this guy. This guy looks like his dick is gonna get nominated for a Teen Choice Award. <laughs> You look like the first 33-year-old to ever join the 27 Club. This guy feels a lot like Bernie Sanders. I like you. I'd even vote for you. I'm just worried about you being alive in four years. Oh, is this real? Oh, I got a note here that says you're a big advocate for mental health. Is that right? You're willing to talk to anybody about it? As long as it's a young girl messaging you on Instagram. Oh, Dandel Fraskel, everybody. Look at this guy. This guy eats mushrooms like he's Super Mario, but he looks like Waluigi on a bender. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Ayers, shit show. This guy is so desperate for intimacy, he crowd surfs just to feel human touch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the more and more I roam, the less and less I know about myself. I used to run without a hitch, now I'm in a sitch that's bringing me down. And when I'm feeling blue, it's a hard pill to chew, but this is what I do. I wrote a little song. Wrapped with a message to say fuck you Don't let the haters get you down Let's show the love spreading around ba 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 Great show for you tonight, Mr. Kyle Ayers, Mr. Tim Heidecker, and Pigeons playing ping pong. You ready? I'm ready. Ruin all your fun. Let's start the show. It got no cash or grassy crash. It got no job. It got no job. It's a shit show. Blah, blah, blah. What's right is sick and sick is right. All right, welcome back to the shit show. I'm Andy Frasco. How are we doing, everybody? How's our heads? How's our minds? Are we staying out of trouble? Are we trying not to let the quarantine fuck us as much as it has? Uh, 2021 is going to be a new year for us. We're going to fill it with optimism and fill it with new dreams. With that being said, I'm bringing in one of the writers 
to help me. We got Tim Heidecker here on the show this uh, week, and I got to be funny. You know? So ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Los Angeles, California, give it up for comedian Kyle Ayers, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle! Hey, Kyle. How you doing? How you, hey, Kyle. Thank you for having me. Am I funny? Are we rolling? <laughs> yeah. Uh, contractually, you, I believe you are funny. So what do I, t- <laughs> what, I ta- what do I talked about with, with, with this guy? Tim Heidecker, one of the funniest people in the world. Yeah. I cannot believe he is on this show. One of my favorite comedians of all time is on your talk show. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, you're like the ghost writer, but. Oh, yes. I'm a ghost writer in the idea that I wish I was dead. <laughs> okay, so pitch me some ideas for jokes you want to do for Tim. Well, and I'll that, prove them. I'll let you know if they're good. Um, I was going to do a joke about just how fucked up I always get. Like, you know, I'm so drunk all the time that I just... Well, that's don't. that's more sad. What about um, I wish I was a point guard for the Lakers? Funny. They know I'm Jewish. I can't... Well, that's... Uh, what if I'm a gecko selling insurance? Like Geico? Like you're talking about Geico ad? I love Geico. What about, hey, Tim, two black guys walking No, okay, this already sounds like it's not going to work. You, you've jammed in music before, right? Yeah. You want to be on the same wavelength when you jam. The same thing is going to apply to comedy. You want to be on the same wavelength. If, if you're playing in different keys, it's going to sound bad. I mean, I forced myself into this episode just so maybe he will see I exist. Uh, so I was wondering why you haven't showed up the whole time. Uh, yep. All you had to do was book someone I care about. I feel like you're being offensive that I'm trying to take your job, though. No, okay. You know what? No, I'll do it without your help. You'll do it without my help. Yeah. You, you're going to write the jokes and do them for Tim Heidecker, one of the best comedians in the world. Yeah, why the fuck not? Okay, can I get paid now before you do that? All right, let's go watch a sketch while I work on my A sketch I probably up. wrote. Do you miss getting fucked up in public? Were you on the edge of having a substance abuse problem before COVID, but you masked it by going to music festivals with friends? Wait, what? Then we've got the app for you! What's up fam? It's your boy, CEO and venture capitalist, Evan Anderson. And I'm here to talk about my new business adventure. Adventure! I've merged with my friend and your boy, CEO of party flavored powders and liquids, Bodega Betty. Take it away, BB. Merger! Thanks, EA. If you've ever been to a music festival, 100% of what you put in your nose and in your mouth is probably my shit. It's his shit. So, Bodex, what exactly is the Bender app? Well, Evs. In times of social distancing, it's hard to find someone to get fucked up with. Ain't that the truth? Maybe everyone in your house is sober. Sobe Wan Kenobi. And you can't find no one to get lit with. <laughs> you should meet my wife. She hates when I do ketamine. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get a divorce too. <laughs> For those times you need a partner in crime, use Bender! Just log on to the app and choose your vendor of choice. You can pick from cocaine, alcohol, ketamine, or the mystery box. And of course, your vendor buddy is trained at the latest COVID-19 safety protocols. You Phil? Yeah, that's me. This is your vendor buddy, Colby. Keep it six feet. Always remember, your bender buddy is committed to you and your drug addictions. Get blasted without worrying about catching COVID, because that could seriously hurt you. Yeah, COVID's some bad shit. <laughs> and in addition to a normal bender, we recently added bender bundles. Stop you from texting an ex. Group hangs. Next day brunch. Argue about bands no one cares about. Listen to stories about other times you got fucked up. Listen to one of your beats on a phone speaker. Cry with you. Do karate. Argue about politics and religion. Badmouth DJ. PlayStation. TV VCR repair. Watch porn together. Pilates. Listen to a World War One podcast. One last drink. Okay, this time it's one last drink. Take Ambien and count how many hours of sleep you'll get if you fall asleep right now. You can do way too much of anything and you don't have to feel bad about it. Download Bender today. I miss my family.
All right, welcome back to the shit show, everyone. A uh, very special guest, comedic legend, and now he's doing music, and I can't wait to talk to him about it. Tim Heidecker, ladies and gentlemen. Tim! Dude. There he is. Yeah. What's up, bud? Yeah! What's going I'm on? I'm up to your level here. <laughs> how's how's okay. it going out there? Oh, it's great. It's it's just been a great period for me. This uh this year has been awesome. What have you been doing? Just partying. <laughs> I've been hosting a lot of big parties. <laughs> yeah? Are you keeping it uh yeah. COVID safe? Oh no. no. <laughs> I'm stoked that you are taking a deep dive into music. I got I listened to the new record. Are you oh, writing these right? tunes? No, I got songwriters, man. I pay people to write this shit. It's Songs like ghostwriters. Yeah. It's just all about branding. I'm trying to hear, like, what are your influences there? Is it you know, my stuff, I like a certain kind of music, and while I'm not trying to do anything overtly retro is sort of a fetish. I just kind of write songs in that style. And the people that play on the records like that kind of music. And so it all kind of drifts that way without us really trying, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it just feels insincere to like slap on, you know, a dubstep beat over something just to feel like we're not doing it retro. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, shit. Hold on. There's like a lot of country music in this record, I think. There's a lot of um, pedal steel guitar and, you know, there's country harmonies and stuff. So there are simple songs. They're, I'm not very sophisticated in my writing, so they tend to be kind of folky and, uh, you know, like children's music occasionally or just rock and roll, you know? It's like going back to the genre. Like, why do we have to categorize artists as, oh, he's just a comedian or, oh, he's just a musician? Why can't we categorize the artist as just the artist. Like Kaufman did that so well. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's my, that's what I would think would be interesting, but it becomes difficult, I guess, for some people. In the past three records I've put out, um, they're, they're more connected to my real life or my, uh, they're a little more coming from my heart. And, uh, and I just get more, you know, uh, it's not like um, I'm stopping doing something else. I'm actually doing lots of other things in the comedy world. And and music is something you could just do. You know, I can go in for a couple of weeks and do a record and write songs when I can. And uh, it's still, I, I, I don't want anyone to think that I've just, I'm now this other thing. During the quarantine, were you forcing yourself to write and be creative? It was weird because I uh, had made all this stuff. I'd made the record the year before. I made the show Moonbase that's just airing now on Showtime. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. And um, and then Eric and I had toured, so we had and we had made the show Beef House that also aired like in March. So and I had done the stand. It's amazing. It's crazy. It sounds ridiculous, but I had the stand up special that came out that had been shot a year or two before. All this stuff came out this year, but it's not been a it's not been an incredibly fruitful period of creativity. I don't know how you just like stop when you're doing things so actively. It's really hard to stop. And and I have, you know, there's there's all these demons of social media and time wasting on the internet. I've been pretty good at like trying to find like little projects that or projects that are bigger that are, or that that are more long-term that I can kind of chip away at um, if I feel like I should be productive, but I don't have like a great idea necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. it is weird how to try to find when you're not like, okay, tomorrow we're shooting, you know, we have a plan. We're going to shoot all this or yeah. I've got a, a date or I've got a, sh a tour coming up. When you don't have that stuff as a creative person, it gets a little weird. It gets a little kind of, you can get pretty listless. Yeah, and, and you got to spend more time with your family. I bet that sucks. Suck, 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 suck. <laughs> I mean, it, it is a lot. Well, I mean, there's I bet, se there's, se there's seven and four, and you know, I I love them, but you just like you want to um, there you need to have some boundaries with them and, and make them. <laughs> Just not in your face all day long. At some point, they're gonna take care of me. That's the plan. That's the long game. 
What hurts you more when someone talks shit about your music or your comedy? Hmm. That's a good question. They both aren't fun and I don't, I get very sensitive to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess the comedy is more, I don't know. They both, they both suck. I mean, I, I, if it's, you know, constructive criticism or it's like, I, I wasn't all on the board. Like I liked what they're trying to do, but here's what didn't work. Like I'm open to that, but why, why do you or anyone care what some dude who's writing for about music or television think? That guy's the one with the things aren't going well because look what he's doing with his life. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. probably making forty dollars just to write that review or something. You know? <laughs> not that not that uh, somebody I need to really hear from. You can't win because you can't complain about reviews, you know? Yeah. You can't use and and I've gotten, you know, I, people like our stuff and like my stuff, and it's very nice. Tim, thanks for being on the show. It really means a lot. Um, I got one more question for you, and, and I'll let you go. Uh, what do you want to be remembered by? My great interviews. <laughs> well, you did a great one, bud. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm rooting for you. I think your music's great, and you have a great fucking voice, man. Sing your ass off. All right, brother. I will. Take care. There you go. Tim Heidecker, everyone. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. Get down, boys. I want to talk to the people. How we doing? Are we worried about the things we need to worry about while we're young and alive and healthy and breathing? Like being better people. We all got our flaws. I was addicted to pussy forever. So what have you done to improve yourself? Think about it. Try to improve yourself every fucking day. Even if it's little little microscope to improvement, at least we can wake up the next day saying we tried. We tried to be better people. So come on, y'all. Give me some of this. Come on. Come on. Let's go.
be the overflowing And she said, can I come inside? Take a more ride Grab you by the door Pictures, it's a shit show, Technicolor. Yeah.